Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Martin Till. Welcome to another Plant 24 edition of Conservation Ag Update. 27% of corn and 18% of soybeans are in the ground according to the latest USDA Crop Progress Report. Now, Westville, Indiana no-tiller Jeff Harold says he's ahead of schedule, but there's something making him a little nervous right now. So we've got about 900 acres of beans planted. We're looking really good. Then we've got about 400 acres of corn. We always start beans first. Corn's on schedule. Conditions were good. So everything so far looks really nice. Um, the only problem we're seeing this spring is slugs. We haven't experienced that in the past. And I don't know how bad they're, they are yet, but uh, just seeing some makes me a little nervous. You hear like the no-till guys talk about it and... You know, they would say, like, that's why they went to vertical tillage, just to try and stir things up. And I don't think it's bad, but that just makes me nervous for the future. Like, does that mean they're coming or is that within a reasonable threshold? When they have damp places to hide and, you know, underneath trash and in the cover and stuff, we really haven't had any experience with slugs. So it's kind of new, new territory for us. Hey, you heard Jeff mention there that he plants soybeans before corn. Well, he's kind of going against the grain with that one, at least according to a recent no-till farmer poll. We asked, what will you plant first this year? It's almost split right down the middle with nearly 53% saying corn before soybeans. Jeff, why soybeans first? We're just trying to get them um, growing early, fast. Corn is more sensitive to colder temperature and as far as like holding it back, where soybeans, you know, if you can get them out of the ground, the more they're growing, the more notes they're going to put on. So I want them growing as soon as possible. Now, 76% of no-tillers who responded to that question on Facebook said they're planting corn first. Akron, Indiana no-tiller Jason Harold, no relation to Jeff, says he's planting corn first because his farm going to corn is going to dry out faster than his farm going to soybeans. Moving on now to this week's farmer feature. This week we're tagging along with the Johnson family on the first day of planting in southern Wisconsin. Inside, it might look like just another day at the office for Leo Johnson. Can you bring bring everything along that you think you might need? But outside, planting season has begun. We are putting corn in the ground. Leo's son Patrick is planting into strips for the first time on their 1,000-acre farm in southern Wisconsin. They started strip tilling last fall using this Kuhn Krauss Gladiator to make strips on 600 acres. And this is April 30 inch. Just trying something new. One, you know, just sort of like the idea of the accuracy of all of the kind of putting the nutrients where uh, where you're actually putting crop. And then the other thing we kind of like the idea of uh, something uh, growing, uh, uh, opening up the soil a little earlier and uh, getting them and then being able to hopefully dry the soil out a little bit uh, quicker in the spring. Everything seems to be going smoothly as Patrick checks in with his dad. I'm finally hitting this washout you talked about. And, yeah, how bad is it down there? Um, it's it's not that bad. It's more, um, oops, I got a seed thing going on. Uh, I'll talk to you later. See ya. The conversation comes to an abrupt end. Patrick sees a problem, so he gets out of the cab to investigate and appears to have everything figured out. Uh, we had a little fault saying that we were out of range uh, on one row. It looks like we're good now. But after further review, something's still off. It's time to call in Jason Pennycook, precision specialist with the family dealership Johnson Tractor. And then it's given me a planter stop. And before, and now bef when I was going, it gave me an error on just that row. It said population out of range. And I went back and checked it and it was clear and everything looked like it was hooked up, but I'm a bit at a loss. Okay, let's go back to diagnostics. Uh, but I'm on, I'm not getting the planner to engage. Through FaceTime, Jason's able to see everything on Patrick's monitor and talk him through the problem. Yeah, no planner systems is on because it's a stop. Okay. Yeah, it was blinking at the same rate as all the rest of them. Okay. Um, give me one second, I'm going to call you right back. I got a text support call. Sounds good. Yep. There appears to be something wrong with a sensor on one of the rows. Patrick suspects a bad connection as he waits for Jason to call him back 
Another technician from Johnson Tractor helps him jiggle the row unit around and get the planter up and running. Back in the cab, Patrick scarfs down a sandwich as he wraps up his conversation with Jason. Like it was calling for a massive amount of seed, like it would always go to the max. Okay, yeah, and uh, don't get that but questions. I, I was the one who imported the uh, prescriptions, so. <laughs> yep. Crisis averted, just another day at the office as planning season rolls on at the Johnson's farm. Now, we just heard from Leo Johnson. He tells us that he actually had a record week planting 600 acres in four and a half days. You can catch Leo at the National Strip Tillage Conference August 8th and 9th in Madison, Wisconsin. He's going to share some of those lessons learned from his first year strip tilling. You can cash in on those early bird registration savings at striptillconference.com. Right now, let's send it over to McCain Vogel for today's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. This week, we're going to hear from Dodge County, Wisconsin no-tiller, Tony Pyrick, as he shares some key tips for setting up a planter to plant green into a living cover crop. And this video comes to us courtesy of University of Wisconsin's Integrated Pest and Crop Management Program. So many people, when they do go planting green and planting this residue, they're not getting the seed down deep enough because we do have that root system with cereal rye on the surface, and that can take up some moisture and keep it a little drier on top, but you gotta get it down deeper. So you get it down two, two and a half, three inches, you'll be down in the moisture. And then once everything keeps going, it'll really take off. But the main thing with that is getting the seed in the ground. You have to get it down over two inches with this covers and no-till. And most planters can do it. Keep a nice sharp closing disc or the opener disc and put some extra weight in the insecticide boxes or weight it down wherever you have or turn up your springs all the way. Pyrick says he uses hydraulic down pressure on his planter, and that best practice is to first add extra weight and then worry about different closing units in the back of the planter. Well, that's all for this week. Until next time, back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. All right, Wednesday marked the one-year anniversary of the deadly dust storm crash that claimed the lives of eight people in central Illinois. Hard to believe it's been a year. Extreme winds blew dirt from tilled fields, causing a 90-vehicle pileup on Interstate 55. Some say the tragedy could have been avoided at the fields were no-tilled. During the 2024 National No-Tillage Conference Innovator Panel, retired USDA Deputy Secretary of Ag Jim Mosley speculated on the regulation that could come from tillage-related incidents. The point I'm going to make is it comes at all times of the year, and it's all dependent upon the conditions. But the fact that we're burying this soil uh, in large quantities across the Midwest uh, does not bode well. I've worked in the, in the policy arena for 30 some years, and uh, I can tell you that the moment will arise, whether it's in legislative bodies, uh, which I don't think it probably will occur there. I think it will end up in the courts. There's going to be action taken. And when that happens, farmers are going to be very unhappy because I think we're going to begin to see the insurance companies walk away from the great risk that is being felt. And this I-55 thing was a, really a major tragedy that I think has set the stage for that to happen. We have much more from the Innovator panel on the cost of erosion and a look back at the deadly dust storm in a new article from Managing Editor Michaela Pockner on notillfarmer.com. All right, let's wrap things up with our video of the week. This one comes to us from Salen 247 founder Dave Krog. Check it out. The company's autonomous planter makes its way across a strip-tilled field in central Iowa. Krog says the field is part of an Iowa State nitrogen response project. Salen 24-7 will be doing a variable rate side dress application in early June, so we'll check back in with Dave around then to see how it goes. Pretty cool stuff there. Hey, got something you like to see on the program? Shoot me an email. There's my email address, nnewman at lessonermedia.com. Thanks so much for spending part of your busy day here with us. We'll see you for our next episode, May 17th. Have a great day.